Welcome to the Zacrilege Cast podcast, YouTube video interview program that features me talking to some of the best and brightest in the atheist slash secular slash awesome community. This is episode 255. I recorded this of an interview on June 12th, 2021. I'm trying to do the intense, almost wrestler-like voice just it didn't quite work for me, so apologies. Thank you to Chris for playing through pain or what it took to defeat the pain and talk randomly with me two weeks ago. Podunk Polymath, may it return to your podcast feed soon. Robert Stanley returns. We talked about his thoughts behind starting a podcast and how he's still motivated to do it years later. We discussed some of his episodes, like the debate on systemic racism, a debate on evolution, the problem of evil, and the atheist who turned Muslim. We also had a short, spirited debate on left versus right-wing violence due to protests. I still don't know if I could do a debate or whether I'd get anything out of it, but I think it still uh, holds a purpose. And there's just always, uh, I think a little mess seems to be the best way it tends to work. Like the very formal ones, not always so great. So there's a little bit on platforming, and forgive me for the odd during the day recording and the no beer. So let's start the conversation. TV, be more funny! Welcome to the Zachary Cast. Robert Stanley and um, a surefire way to guarantee your cat leaves the desk is to yell real loud and have a gone. Yeah. Sound. Well, I enjoyed looking at his butthole. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm representing here, you know, Cat Nation, and um, we are doing a rare uh, daytime show. So I will show you a beer. I will not drink a beer, sadly, because you know daytime and all. Mm-hmm. Wow, pistoles. So I originally am connected to this beer because about six years ago, uh, our one of our last cats died, and on the day he died, we like went out and just ate a bunch of really fatty, bad food. And then I had this beer, which was pretty good. So you know, it's like in honor of a uh, Chewy. And now we have our next generation of Soy and Skitty, who hopefully will not interrupt the show. Anyway, this is not a cat show. This is a <laughs> Serious discussion, Joe. I mean, none of you do one of those. So you could, you could name it Cat Relige. Cat Relige. You know, they probably do easier to spell than this yeah. version. <laughs> but right to reason. Uh, how long has this show been going on now? Uh, four years. Four yeah, years. Four years. It 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 was supposed to become a big deal. Like when I started it, I wanted to. Like I just had this fantasy of being like. Um, uh, on on some kind of video with like the numbers going up on the side, <clears throat> and like they're like donations to some cause or whatever, and you know I'm all like doing radio like all right we're doing it today you know like like pumping everybody up and I don't know why I thought that was gonna happen but then the, it was after about about two years in I was like so that never occurred why am I still <laughs> doing this and I thought well I really enjoy it. I just I, I like having these conversations. I like talking to people. So the my my whole way of doing the show kind of changed after that. Where I, I I stopped trying to be like a YouTube celebrity, and I just started just being myself and talking to people. You know, so it it's a lot more fun when it's a hobby than whenever you think of it like a job. Yeah, the whole concept of I mean, we're all like niche of a niche in a in a way. Yeah. So it's like to be. You know, I know in the history of all the people I've interviewed, only a few are like, this is the day job. And it is, yeah, it becomes a job. Like it can be, oh, it's fun to do a show and then forget about it or think about it occasionally. Yeah. And when it's a job, it's a totally different thing. And yeah, making sure it's it's fun. So how do you, th- do you think your show, how, how has it kind of changed uh, over, over the years? Uh, a lot less cheesy radio voice like all right today we're talking to a christian and a muslim whoa that's crazy you know like like trying to fake hyperbole and all that uh uh i I used to do videos i stopped focusing on youtube altogether i still post it there post to youtube but but i really enjoy like the audio like I, i love i love listening to old radio shows like like uh opie and anthony you know or something like that where it's just uh the the whole the whole show is just a conversation and it's fun and it's interesting. And that's, 
that's kind of where I wanted the show to go. Not like not with that kind of not like a comedy show, but but just more or less uh, just audio only, like like a, like a radio show. So I focus more on on the podcast end of it rather than on trying to make videos. And plus, making videos takes so much time. You know, like you and I, we got day jobs. <laughs> like, I All got, these, I got uh, yeah. To do. <clears throat> It's like, oh, I have this 10-minute video that comes out every two months, and it takes me, like, seven years to yeah. produce each It's like, yeah, video editing is tough. Audio editing, well, if I did much of it, yeah, I would think it was tough. But Not uh, too bad. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> Sunday, Sundays is my podcast day, pretty much. Um, so throughout the week, I might, I might be contacting somebody, you know, like, hey, Zach, what are you doing? Let's, let's do something this weekend, you know. But other than that, it's... Um, it's just it's basically just Sunday. How was the mix for you uh, between like just kind of conversations and then like doing formal or semi-formal type debates on the show? Um, I don't like the formal stuff. I I had an uh, Oxford style debate <laughs> recently. Um, the uh, evolution one. Yeah, yeah, and and nothing against the guys on it uh, by by any means. I thought they 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 were great and everything. It was just boring to me, and I, you know, I. If it's not, if it's not just a regular two guys just talking about their beliefs, and you know, having having some good stuff to back up why they believe what they believe, of course, but, but, you know, just politely discussing where they come from, like it, it, it it's not fascinating to me. It's not like I don't click on those, uh, those old, you know, like Matt Dillon, Honey Atheist experience. I guess you know, not necessarily old. I think he still does that show. But but you know I, I don't watch those I really don't I did when I was when I was first an atheist because I was angry and you know nothing against people that want to put that content out there that's great more power to them but you know because there's other angry people you know they, they they need to see that they need to see a little pushback um, and I needed it at the time it, it was helpful to see that you know you can not believe in what you grew up with and make that other person see see the the foolishness behind it you know whenever you're you're debating them but yeah the, the stuff i listen to is more just just regular conversations um i like those like, the pain burn debates i thought the, as far as debate goes remember those there was like it was like real popular for a while it was, was kind of right leaning but but it, it brought both sides of the the ideas together on religion and politics you remember that guy is it, some i can't remember his first name something Pangburn. Yeah, I thought, um, I feel like I heard about that. It seemed like it was Did connected he? with like the mythicist Milwaukee people, and they made a major crazy right wing turn over the years. But you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, are, are they still around? I kind of, yeah, quit paying attention, but they're still out there. Yeah, they're still. My, my whole thing, like, I saw, I didn't know about them before they had Sargon of Akkad on. <laughs> And, and that famous Thomas Smith debate, which was, oh my God, it was so cringeworthy to watch. But but I hadn't really followed them since then either. So I, I didn't even know they were going right wing, you know, aside from having Sargon there. But but are they like like pro Trump or something? Like, is it that far? Or is it more like the. Oh, yeah. I think I think there was discussion about, I don't know. I only hear about like people reacting to them since I just stopped. Right. Because initially they were like, Jesus mythicism and they did interviews and then they decided, well, you know, let's make our conference more interesting by having Sargon on and like the Sargon guy, like, let me check out his videos. I'm like, God, that's really dumb and juvenile and, and mean. And some right. people really like that. And that's a very pop, like, I can't imagine like maintaining that. <laughs> like maintaining that's, that's who that person is or being just forever. that, like being, that being interesting for a while. Cause like five years later, it's like, you're saying the same stuff. It's kind of like, you know, doing a podcast. No you're like, yeah. well, you're not going to, I don't know if, did you initially start like, Oh, we're going to talk about atheism. And then of course they eventually want to talk about other stuff, like social stuff. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on that you may not even talk about religion in one week. Did you feel like constrained at first? Or are you like, no, you know, you're kind of open. Um, well, when I started, it was, it was right right at the whole uh trump had just become president or he was becoming president it was like right around it was right around that time and 
what was it, 2017? So yeah, he had already been elected. And so I, I was wanting to talk about po political stuff right from the beginning for obvious reasons. But I got caught up in the whole... I got caught up in a lot of, like, I don't like the term woke because it, it's really not, it's not what it is, but I got caught up in a lot of that stuff right in the beginning um, just because it was so easy to point at the Trump side and just be like, look how awful <laughs> these people are, you know? But I, 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 w I would say, like, at the time I thought, like, platforming people, kind of like how we were, we were talking about, like, Sargon, with the Milwaukee thing, I would have thought platforming people would have been bad. Whereas now, I, I've kind of, I've kind of changed my views on on like the free speech thing, where I, I don't object to platforming horrible people. You know what I mean? And you could you could say at the well, same time, well, what would you have Hitler <laughs> on your show? You know, yeah, <laughs> but that's great views. But but no, I mean it, obviously there's. There is there is a line, right? You don't want to be like an absolutist about anything. So for a free speech absolutist, you know, there there definitely is dangerous speech out there. But I don't know. I just I don't go down the whole platforming road. I kind of got off the topic from what you were asking, but that's one thing that that, that would change that has changed, I guess. Well, it did um you know, you mentioned kind of debates. Like, I think I listened to three different, like, kinds of debates in episodes you've done fairly recently. Like, the evolution one, where you're just, like, the moderator. So you're not yeah. that Those are involved. fun for me. Well, I was like, yeah, I wondered. You know, that was the one where you were not really talking that much. And then it was your, like, most recent episode as of this recording when you talked to a pastor about the problem of evil. And in a way, I was like, man, that's just... People don't do that anymore. They don't have these. This, we moved on from that, but there's still people mm -hmm. who are like, "God's great because God exists," and that was yeah. interesting because you were doing the de the debating, and then there was the uh, systemic racism one with Stephen Hill and David Silverman, which you were. It was mostly them talking, but you know you're in there. You're kind of steering the ship as as much as you could. Trying with to, those two yeah. Personalities. Actually, so is there some, some like pushback on that? I was one. wondering with debates because, like you said, the formal debates get a little boring after a while. Though, does God exist? Kind of debates kind of mm -hmm. boring after a while. But you know, what's the percentage of religious people like in power right now? And maybe you know, what do they believe and why? And who's given them their talking points? Yeah, is critical. My cat's giving me some talking points right now, <laughs> oh, which is awesome. Um, but how do you? I guess do a, a a good debate. Like when you did you say like I want to do a debate about systemic racism, and then you find the people, or were you like you know who would be interesting to talk? Stephen Hill and David Silverman. Like I know yes. they're on the opposite sides. Like you knew them; they've been involved in the community. I don't even know what community David Silverman's in anymore. Uh, he does this <laughs> atheists for liberty, yeah. which sounds a lot like very right wing talking points. It is version of our community. Yeah. And it's interesting that, you know, when Silverman was doing all his talks about being a firebrand atheist, he wasn't talking about African-American communities being uh, lesser <laughs> like he did the, the debate. That was wild. I don't know. Is there a certain point when you're getting like hearing stuff like that and you're like, oh, my God, we like. Why is um, why am I why did I have him on the show? Or are you like, yes, right. People no. need to hear this perspective Fair. because I don't know if it's his perspective or yeah, fair but it is a perspective. A lot of people share. Right. Right. That one, that one I, I got, I got negative pushback on because they said Steve Hill came off as the angry black man, the stereotype of, you know, a, a, a black guy. And yeah, that's, that's a tough one because it's almost like he was almost debating like his existence. So like, why wouldn't he be mad? I know you're even like, I am right. pushing back. On that episode, but it'd be like having someone who thinks all trans people are are liars, and then having a trans person like debate that. Yeah, it'd be hard. Either you're going to be really mad about it and yell at them, or you're going to be like super professional, and people are going to be like, "Why didn't they react to that?" You know, I don't know. It's tough. You can't win. But, but yeah, with anything emotionally heated like that, for good reason. You, you know, doesn't matter how you respond. It's it's 
people are going to have a problem with it. The as far as the Silverman one, that one in particular, like having him on, is I had him on before uh, his whole Me Too thing, and he actually he actually said uh, that we should believe all women, word for word. Oh, absolutely, we should believe all women. <laughs> And then he went on um, uh, Armin Navabi's Atheist Republic broadcast, and Armin Navabi played that clip from that episode and said, you said believe all women, you don't say that now, right? And he goes, no, I can't, I've changed my mind about that. And, uh, and I hadn't had him on since. And then when the systemic racism, it was a real, real hot topic for, at that time, uh, right after BLM and all that, and people just saying, "Well, no, that if you're calling if you're calling racism a systemic issue, uh, then that means that I'm participating in it." You know, and I I don't I don't like that. I think I think that's why a lot of people took offense to it because they're like, "Come on, America's not racist. Cops aren't racist." And they'll say, "You know, it's the category error." Like I have a brother that's a cop. He's not racist, so cops aren't racist. It's, it's like, well, that's not. That's not what we mean by systemic racism. So I mean, it was a it was a big debate at the time, and I thought, oh well, David Silverman is talking about this a lot. I saw him on Dogma Debate. I saw him on a couple other places. I think I'd like to have him on, and I'd like to have a black guy debate him. And Steve's always available. He 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 loves doing that stuff, and and I'm I'm glad he does. But the so that that lined up pretty well based on the topic, um, but not necessarily on the guests. But I did question having silverman on um simply because of the me too stuff and then i thought two two things one and it's always been it's always been in the back of my head uh i don't know what he did you know what i mean i don't i don't believe in that trope that's another one that, that i've i've left i've just left zach i really have I, I used to be believe all women and i don't i don't hold to that anymore myself that doesn't mean i've gone to the right wing level of uh, the silverman has you know obviously but you know I, I look back at that and think well that's that's not what we are as skeptics that's not reasonable um it's probably more likely that <laughs> it's true than it's not i think that's a fair a fair way to to look at an accusation of sexual assault or rape or something it's it's more often true um but this 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 take that half of humanity deserves my trust based on their gender you know what i mean like that 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 idea i've i've lost that and not to you know well let's not trust them because they're women obviously not that's not what i'm saying but there there was that and then the other side of i've had you know it's a debate show i've had nazis on you know what i mean or uh, i got a white supremacist coming on uh, he names himself Gordon Call, um, which is a guy. I think it was yeah, it was in the eighties that got into a standoff. He was like some kind of uh, posse comitom, posse comitomus. I'm not sure how to say it. Hmm. Posse comitomus. Uh, anyway, some dumb, dumb, dumb white nationalist organization, you know. But I was thinking, like, I, I have a lot of bad people on my show. Um, and I think it, it might be different if I had Silverman on and we just talked about, oh, all these bitches were reporting you like that would be, that would be a, you know, like, like, oh, fuck them. You're a really cool guy doing that without knowing he was innocent of what he was charged of. I think that would be wrong, but I have, I Having him on in a debate format, especially when he's been talking a lot of shit about that on on social media, um, I didn't I didn't feel like that was bad. I don't know. What do you What do you think? Do you think it's it's somewhat dangerous to platform someone that has that kind of background, that kind of record, and post the things he does online? Oh, it's almost like you have to treat it on a case by case basis. I, I just. Sure think that the way he talked when he was the president of American Atheist and the way he's talking now totally different makes me think that he's just a person who wants to be famous and he wants to be worshipped almost. He yeah. wants to be treated almost like a demigod and he just thought, hey, I go to conferences and I get to have women and he gets to tell them that you know he was in an open relationship when he wasn't. Like he 
clearly lied about his relationship. Like what happened with individual women? Sure, questionable, but the stories were kind of gross and the way that he acted, it's like, do I want someone like this representing me and representing what I believe? And that's the definite no. And just, he's just being super, he isn't like, yeah, I don't know what, you know, something happened with a woman that's okay. He was just like, they're lying and they're terrible. And, you know, and then yeah. going, going right wing talking points 101 and then going on all the atheist shows where they're kissing his butt. It's like, right. do you guys, <laughs> obviously you don't seem to care much about women if you're going to be defending him. And it is, you could say that, yeah, people are lying, but you can tell that the problem is like, well, in the atheist sphere, he was like, one of the highest level people and now being whatever he is right wing reactionary he's like third string you know he's not going to be on the starting lineup he's not going to be Ben Shapiro and I think he's realizing that and I think he's angry about it and now he's you know maybe he's back in his angry atheist phase um, but he's attacking he's always punching down like he's just super about that he's like oh people who are you know he was at that George Floyd oh, that guy's just a criminal so it doesn't matter like that, that, yeah, that I didn't get that argument. There's not a lot of humanism coming out of this guy's pores. So just because of that, I wouldn't really want to talk to him because he seems like he's being mean because he's thinking that's going to get whatever audience he's trying to reach now to like love him again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> it was funny. Like you mentioned, I have a uh, one person in the chat, native atheist, who actually I haven't uh, had in the chat before. So, you know, welcome on. He was like, dogma debate's still around. I'm like, yeah, uh, apparently. Yeah, it's called still uh, on. It's David like, C. Smalley now. I just quit because I used to like donate. He was like the one show I donated to and I really like looked forward to listening to it. And then I realized that eh, I kind of liked his co-host more. And um, then he was kind of drifting a little right as well. And he just kind of disappeared off the radar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so there's some shows where it's, it's just like, there. I don't hate the show. It's just like, I stop listening to it. <laughs> that happens a lot. You know what David's, uh, was it his second accusation? Um, it was the one, it was the one, um, he, he touched my sacrum and it was the lady that was with Wolf Blitzer and that, Old the old news clip was that Rebecca says, Bitsman? Bitsman, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he says, uh, "Well, you must you must thank that God was, that you're alive." And she said, "I'm an atheist." It's that it's that same chick. That was but, strange. Uh, yeah, it was like at a conference, and he, I don't know if she no, had it was a party slipped or something, and he just touched her, and she was yeah, like really her really mad about it. So the audio she released about that. Um, was with her talking with a friend and the friend came out. Uh, I want to say it was this, it was this year. The friend came out and said, and went on uh, Silverman's YouTube channel and said, I, I knew it was wrong the whole time. I was, I was lying. I knew she was full of it <clears throat> and I just did it to be supportive, but I knew it wasn't true. And so that one, that one I'm thinking is probably bullshit. I mean, you never know, you know, um, be, get to be what? like a, a jury and then right, right. Uh, it does yeah, make you, you it's like you know you were you did that the, the evolution debate and the christian was asking the uh pro evolution you know pro reality guy like do you know how life started to exist and he said i don't know it does sometimes feel like it's not okay to say like i don't know <laughs> And when it comes to like things that really do affect people's lives, like you, people get accused and that could affect their livelihood. Although in the case of David Silverman, he was like, oh, I'm selling insurance. I'm like, you can make a fine living selling insurance. You know, most podcasters don't, this is not a living. This is something you do in your free time. Right. So he was not owed a, a livelihood just because people liked him. You know, we've, uh, We've overdone the silver and yeah. stuff. Have you had like based on you know people kind of think that you know you have on controversial guests and talk about controversial topics. 
have you had ones or had guests on where the reaction has been, you're like, oh God, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> or you've been like, oh, people were mad. Uh, not so much. Just I'm not... That's, you know, you're getting, you know, you're getting an interaction out of it. Getting people yeah. think, maybe. I'm, I'm not a big enough deal to get enough negative reaction for anything I do. You know what I mean? Um, but the, the Silverman one a, a little bit, the, um, there was one I, I did and I actually felt bad during the conversation. It dawned on me. This person is not mentally stable. Um, and what am I doing at this moment? And I still went through, edited it and posted it. Um, so it's not like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. Um, and I got a little pushback on that. But it was a guy that believed he had been visited by aliens. And I had uh, Skeptic Brett. Remember Skeptic Brett? Have you talked to him in a while? Mm -hmm, yeah. He used to do uh, Atheists on High. I think he's firing that back up uh, here pretty soon. But um, yeah, it was the two of us. It was one of those where like, I'm the moderator, but I kind of jump in here and there. And... So it was supposed to be, you know, the skeptic Brett versus the alien abductee, allegedly kind of person. And like halfway through, it, 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 if you hear it, you can you can hear like like Brett's like going at him. You know, well, how do you know? I mean, it could be uh, uh what's the one that uh, where you, where you're sleeping but you can't get up, but then you become awake, but you think there's like a demon holding sleep you down. Paralysis. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was made. The guy was clearly. That explaining hmm. sleep paralysis and brett was you know doing the skeptical thing of like oh well don't you think that's what it could be it's, uh you know percentages of sleep paralysis or blah 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 you know that that whole routine and like and i was being mr moderator guy and everything was uh, uh just going through like a regular episode and right about halfway you can hear it in both me and brett's voice of us going "Ooh, this sounds bad <laughs> like this guy's not okay um uh, you know, like it's it's no longer a I'm going to prove you wrong. It's more like we both went to the Are you on medication? Are you seeking help? Hmm. Um, we would recommend you do that. When was the last time you talked to somebody? Do you have somebody to talk to? You know that kind of thing. And uh, that one, I think, I, I think that's that's wrong. I think I think that was wrong to to continue with that episode, or at least to, to post it. I don't, I don't know. In the conversation, I don't think it was wrong to keep talking, but. It might have been wrong to post that. I don't know. But that one, that one I did get a little pushback on because people are like, hey, that's a crazy person. What are you doing? So, so what made you decide um, it's time to talk about the problem of evil? Oh, I still do I still do all of them. All the all the old uh, atheist stuff. I do those, I don't know, 60%, 70% of those atheist stuff. Um so I think uh, I think before that was uh, that dude that just turned Muslim, um, the empathetic atheist Justin Downing. Um, what does he and, just call? He does the EA because I that yeah, whole yeah. thing was like going through the uh, like Twitter YouTube sphere because it was announced. I was always going to have like a Neil the two, six hundred four atheist on my show, and he was interviewed by this guy, and I'm like. I think this guy has become a, a Muslim and he's like, Oh no. And it was around April, <laughs> like, it oh, was yeah. April, April 1st. And everybody was like, if he's faking it, he's doing a really good job because the dude is like speaking language. He's on the show with the Muslim people. He's got it's the legit. beard going on. It's real. Yeah. It is not a joke. So I know he's been on a few shows. What was it like uh, chatting? With Super him? nice guy. Like Online. Pretty well online he comes off like a total dick um like really but 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 we even we even talked about that like off offline and like he, he knows that he comes off that way he doesn't he doesn't intend to but just like one-on-one -on -one, super nice guy um he didn't he didn't come off like a dick to me like before we 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 talked but he, he did seem like kind of sensitive like i posted something on facebook about um I'm uh, going to be talking to Justin Downing soon. I uh, do you think he's legit? I think he's faking it, and that kind of pissed him off. He's like, "Why are you calling me a, a liar? You know what's the deal?" Is I thought, like, man, this this is not going to be a good interview, but it was totally fun interview. Um, very very hard to hit him with anything philosophical that he hasn't heard and doesn't already have an answer to. 
And I'm thinking that's probably, you know, to, to be somebody that was a Christian has the ability to change their, 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 uh, belief, uh, to stop believing, to, to become an atheist. And then to have the, the honesty to abandon athe atheism and go to Islam. I mean, even if we would say, <clears throat> excuse me, even if we'd say, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, like, and I, I even pointed out to him, like, you picked the worst religion, bro. Like, <laughs> come on, it's yeah. Muslims. But, uh, but the, it's still, it's still a level of honesty that I think that you could say, and it, maybe just intellectual honesty to say, I, I will abandon something if I don't think it's real, if I don't think it's true. That I can respect, but he started to defend um, the the pedophile shit for a second. Yeah, the bit was, it was it was interesting because it, it feels like I feel like he's in the love bomb stage where like mm -hmm. the people in that I can't remember the true whatever the channel was where they were doing the philosophical. They clearly got him on the philosophical thing, and somehow. He went from there's a necessary being to it had to be the Islamic God. I, I don't know. I don't I know. Don't, how I still that 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 connection. I, I never quite quite made it. But yeah, he's mm -hmm. it's weird. He's like he did say like it wasn't talking to you. I thought the honesty was great that he was like you know I'm still open to having my mind changed, but he clearly was like all in. And he was yeah. saying like the party line, like, you know, Silverman saying the right wing party line. He was saying like the, well, the standards were different back then. It's like, so if you have this eternal God who came up with this perfect, great, amazing book, but he married someone and had sex with them when they were nine, that should in theory be wrong forever or it should be right forever. How did it change? <laughs> And how right. do you judge this human being who just like, well, I guess I'm like <clears throat> Jesus, we pretty sure he existed, uh, but he was illiterate during his lifetime and all the stuff he talked about wasn't written down for, I don't know how long. So yeah, you get from this like weird philosophical games that they play to uh, yeah, saying, oh, I'm, this is definitely true. It was fascinating because it hasn't happened. Like you've seen people who've gone like from there was one like a former pastor and she was like a really big deal in atheist. And then she went back, I think, just because wasn't making a living on our end. I don't remember that I'm one. Trying to remember who that was. Um I feel like there've been some people who have flip flopped. Like if you went back oh, to religion, maybe you'd go uh, back to your own like Baptist or was that atheist atheist for a year or something like that? Was that the one? No, I can't. I think the guy the guy ended up going back. It was like she That was a guy. That came a guy. back and then there were like these issues of financial impropriety and then she's just like, I'm Christian again. So it was like, oh, okay. We've had <laughs> we've had some of them, but yeah, the whole going Islam. And at the same time, like there isn't a ton of atheist content that looks into and it's weird. Like when you look into Islam, it's different than Christianity, it seems like seems like you go really quickly from like, wow, this religion seems mean and terrible, much like Christianity, to like the people who are practicing it are mean and terrible. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of, uh, that's what gets you kind of heading in the right wing direction. But um, yeah, I'm glad you had him on. Um, I don't know, like you were asking about like gay rights and it seemed like he was doing the whole Christian kind of argument of like, sure, you can be gay, you just can't. To have sex with each other, <laughs> that's it. Um, because he was like, and that one, bad. he just he just said, I wouldn't, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go out and protest with gay rights, but I'm okay with them being gay, which, yeah, I'm kind of like, well, whatever, I'll take it. But the yeah, the sodomy one was weird because he's like, I don't know why it's bad, but I know it's bad. <laughs> All right, <laughs> is, it, is it bad to fuck your wife in the ass? You know, like that, that's always my response to people that are like, "Gay is wrong because of the butt." It's like, how is? When was your butt bad? Like, is your butt gay? <laughs> your butt. Like, if you play yeah, with your own butt, butt, is that a little gay? You know, like what? It's your butt. <laughs> like, it's part of your body. I was part of your body gay. It's like twenty straight. You know, gay. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little. That's a little. 
<laughs> the toilet. But it's not. Um, oh, that's like two percent gay. It's got. It's the weird. Like God is perfect, and yet everything we do is bad according to God. Yeah. It's so, God made us, so everything's is good. Really. Plus, there was the, the, the oh, sin is, the, is forgiven, so you should do you should do more sin because you know you, you got a jail free you, card. Come on. Yeah, you would think the 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 pedophile thing though is I say to him, you know, can, can we at least accept uh, um, that a, a a child cannot give consent? And he goes off on this whole thing of. Well, we're judging them because it was a different time and a different culture, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> like this is crazy!" You know, obviously re- referencing uh, Muhammad and what was her name, like Aisha or mm-hmm. I, uh, something. Yeah, a- Aisha. I can't remember her name, but uh, apparently she's like nine or maybe eleven, and then you know, they argue. No, she was fifteen, so it's okay. Like <laughs> you crazy, my you know, my my daughter is sixteen. Uh, I can't, you know, I can't imagine her being able to give consent like that's that's it's absolutely uh, uh offensive and immoral and he he did admit though that it was wrong i thought that was that was at least progress that he he just said uh yeah um what muhammad did was wrong okay i, I can see there's a different culture it's a different time period uh you can make the same argument about slavery um <laughs> you could say well they didn't they didn't yeah. really understand that they were treating uh, fellow people that deserved equality badly. They thought they were treating uh, something closer to an animal badly or something like that. I can, I can buy that. Was it wrong? You got to be able to say yes. You know, if you're, you got to be able to say yes, that's, it was wrong. They might not, it might not be as bad as if they did it today because they grew up in a society where they know slavery is wrong. Um, but at the time, you know, they, they didn't know that. And I, I get that. Uh, that's how we have moral progress as we learn as we go. So you, the, the people from the past are always going to be bad. <laughs> you know, I don't think that means that we should topple over all, all their statues per se, but, uh, you still have to be able to say it's wrong. Uh, and he, he, he could go that far. So I thought that was, that was good at least. Yeah, it's, it's might be setting the bar low. <laughs> it's a fine, it's a fine line, you know. You want to, you kind of want to go. Well, I would ask someone else this kind of question, but you do want to be like, well, this guy is, I don't know what he is, six months into it, mm-hmm. however long. I, I feel like I saw an episode of him talking to these guys, and it was like in January. So uh, it seems like it's still a relatively new thing. Like you're not going to be an expert on it right away, but at the same time, you're going to be someone we're going to be able to talk to like i know Aaron Ra's doing this thing where he's like reading the the quran he's having experts on who are like ex-muslims and then he's having like some oh, current great. muslims to debate so at least in that case yeah you're able to kind of discuss it yeah but it does seem like just based on the people who have read all the holy books i'm just like i just can't i don't know <laughs> it seems like it's gonna be rough it's so silly uh, <laughs> it's such a silly religion i swear to god hey you were asking me uh how long have I? How long I've been doing? How long have you been doing this? You've been doing it longer than I have. Yeah, I know. I'm one of the old. Uh, how am I still here? I don't know. About six years, <laughs> I guess. Six years. It was like the 2015. Heading into 2015 is when I did the yeah the first episode. And unfortunately, so cool, because man. it's a one man show, I don't always do one every week. So you can't say, "Hey, let's just divide the number of episodes by," because I don't do one every week. Uh, yeah. try to, but it doesn't always work out that way. I always, I don't know. It's just the way it, uh, you know, the way it goes. And you got some new some, glasses. Yeah, it cool. is look, true. Look like I, a cool guy. I used to not wear them, and I probably shouldn't with the whole. I'm getting the reflection. I don't know. I, I, I saw one one guy who does a show where he doesn't actually like look at the camera, and I thought maybe I should do that because then I can like look at notes and not look like I'm not looking at you, but. I feel like you have to like <laughs> you have to look at each other when you do an interview. Do you remember um it was Penn and Teller, but what's Penn's name? Penn Juliet something. Is it Penn Ju- Penn Penn Gillette? Gillette. Penn Gillette. Yeah. Penn Gillette. Thank you. My brain is so Juliet, weird. yeah. Uh, close. <laughs> Julie. Uh okay, but he, he tried to make his show for a little while where there was a camera in front of him and he would talk with his phone like this. 
like this. And he would be like, blah, 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 blah. And then once in a while, go, and that's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> like, and, but then the camera would switch to him talking to his phone. And it, it, the whole time he's holding his phone, like trying to be hip and cool. Do you remember that? Did you ever see that? No, I've, um, it was fucking. It was funny, but it. not, not funny the way he intended it. Uh, <laughs> it was funny, like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're like sixty, I'm trying to tap into this social I media just, craze. I was lucky. Uh, a former guest like sent me a webcam, so I don't not using the camera on my Mac anymore. It's a it's a better camera. I have a microphone. Yeah, it's very I got this microphone, but it's been. You know, the same. I redid my office, but I have not really organized it. Like I had a bunch of like the lanyards from conferences I'd gone to, but I didn't figure out how to like design them in a way that like fits. Um, you know, if you really want to be like a pretentious jackass show host, you have to have like the name of your show like in neon and put it behind you. Mm -hmm. That's like the Joe Rogan does that. Stephen Crowder. I'm trying to remember. There's a couple more. Stephen Crowder has like two different walls with different like two does it. Um. I yeah, need to feel like the, I need yeah. to wear like that's a, that's a big thing. Actually, I have um because he wears like a gun holster while he's doing his YouTube show. I have not seen this. This is, this is Crowder, a right wing guy. Yeah, well, I, mean, I remember listening to him like many years ago, and it's like he has not changed at all. But he is so popular. But I had a friend who gave me like a belt, and you can put like a bunch of beers in the belt, like, and that would be yeah. my holster. You could like, do that. I carry yeah. You know, but the gun, yeah, okay. I'm dressing up like a character from uh, like Laura Croft, but male. I don't know. It's 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 strange. Like you, it, some people have certain. Like I had um, there's an email company called Mailchimp, and they had these like like chimp kind of hats, and I was wear them for interviews, and I wore them at conferences, like you know, because we're made from you know monkeys and all that. Um, but that's just, it's way very hot in the summer. It just doesn't work. So yeah, <laughs> having, you know, you want to have a look and have like a background and all that stuff. I was thinking of getting one of those dot matrix printers and like printing my show name and putting it in the background. Like, look at me, you know, it's big time. With the, so with the paper, you, with like the, the holes on the sides. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. really, really exactly. cheesy. Like where you can see the, the scotch tape. I feel it. like that, that's where I need that, to go. Even that actually would be cool though. A new paint like, job. Like, that's Someone funny. has to have one of those. But how does it feel? Um, I mean, you've been so you're in Houston, right? Is that still there? Texas uh, Temple. area. Yeah. Did you so get Central go Texas. through that whole crazy winter storm that happened? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, our we didn't lose power and we didn't lose water, so we were really fortunate. Uh, other other houses in the neighborhood lost water. Um, and, and I had a lot of coworkers lose power. Um, but I've got a fireplace fortunately. So we just burnt this shit out of wood for a long time. Um, just hung out at the house. What I really found amazing is people from the North are going to laugh at me. Where, where are you at? Weren't you like Tennessee? In Atlanta. So it's, we would oh, oh, you're in Georgia. be destroyed by the same weather as you would. Yeah. I didn't we had that one inch. I'm, I'm, with that time, we had an inch of snow and we got shut down for like four days. So yeah, I, 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 I was about to say I grew up in Georgia, um, so that's so cool. I didn't know. I don't know. I was in um, Decula for about four years, and then uh, Warner Robins near Macon. You know Macon, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. that area for for about four years. That was that was a major part of my childhood there. So I was like Georgia, Tennessee. Uh, South Carolina, like I've, I've lived in the South most of my, my whole life, short amount of time in, in Michigan. But I say all that to say uh, I had not been around a whole lot of snow. It snows here in Texas once every like four years. It's like a fucking leap year comes around, you know, like it's, it's a rare thing. And it was really weird to just walk out on my in my front yard and just just the silence. It was so and it was so silent. I, I literally went, holy shit. And then I heard, holy shit, like off the, you know, houses around me, you know, because it was, it was, it was really beautiful. Um, but at the same time, could have been avoided. So, and the, the Republicans want to blame it all on, on windmills, but windmills <laughs> is only 25%. Um, so and is, it wasn't is the Ted windmills. Is Ted your senator? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you must have felt like, wow, that leadership is just strong. Go into King. Yeah. Nice. They, they don't care. Texans don't give a shit. 
The guy sure. literally, he, uh, well, you know, as, as you know, he, he left and went to Cancun <laughs> during the whole thing. Um, but he literally went on CPAC like a week later and was being like Mr. Funny Guy, you know, now that he's got the beard and whatever. And he's all like, oh, man, uh, nice weather here. Not as nice as Cancun, though. Am I right? No, everybody laughs. Like, he, he's fucking making fun of it. Like, they just, they're so stuck in that owning the libs. We don't give a shit. We're just supporting our team thing post Trump. Uh, yeah, they discovered that the Trump method like works really well. Yeah, you don't actually have great. to have any policies. You can pretend that everything the left does is terrible and everything the right does can be excused. And yeah, it wasn't white nationalists at the Capitol, like David Silver said. Right. Oh, sure. Yeah, they were all uh, normal people. Antifa. Yes. It was Antifa at the Capitol framing the good the good Trump supporters. But is I will it, say is... this, though. I, I, I heard the argument, well, the, um, the, the cops were being racist because they didn't let Black Lives Matters protesters even near the Capitol, you know, that same year. Um, but they would let these white people walk right in. And I think, I think that's a, it's a valid point in the sense of clearly our law enforcement does, does see color. But the other side of it is Trump supporters had not been violent thus far. They really hadn't. I mean, you get a couple wacky pipe bomb dudes here and there. Mean, like bombs unite the right away. where the guy ran somebody over the car. I mean, there's all these examples of like right wing right. violence but not, during the Trump thing, and he would never go after them. And then like, oh, the BLM they burned a down group. a Target. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> don't attack our. Target, but, but or what is it? I, a Starbucks? I think, they broke windows. I'm I'm with you 100. I'm with you 100. Uh, but I think you're being a little bias on it. But hear me out. Sure. Also, I I do a debate show, so I can't help do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all I know. It's all I know. Anyway, um, I can't have regular conversations. Just talk but, okay, over me when I'm trying during my time. This is my two <laughs> minutes, man. What are you doing talking to me during? Would you let me talk? That was great. That that whole like, Steve <laughs> would, yeah, interrupt. The more yeah. polite guy was the racist, but that's great. But carry on. <laughs> <laughs> that was not planned. Uh, but uh, the um, the the them as a as a group were not going around burning down buildings, destroying property, and killing people. Mm. Not as a group. It seems like it's always right wing violence. Like there was that one like Antifa guy who killed somebody, and then like Trump had the federal government come in and like murder the dude, and he like joked about it. It was like they went to arrest him, and then they just shot him in the head. That was oh, the wow. guy in like Portland. It's like one example, and the right wing people were like, "Yes, finally, we have a left winger who actually killed somebody," and then he got off by the government. Let me Trump, let me let me like, present it, it this way. Okay, so I mean, they were Biden. like people trying to run Biden's like oh stop. van off the road. See, this I mean, that's where... violence, is that not? It's hilarious. Fuck them. Uh, see, this is I mean, this not is that where we like Biden. I mean, you voted for I don't know, <laughs> Mr. Roger. That I forget. You know, <laughs> someone who's I... going to clearly have a big chance of winning. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm. Is there I'm a Green Party for... around anymore? Sorry. Um, yeah. Good luck. This is where it's, it, I'm, I think I'm different from my fellow liberals on is like sometimes I think you guys see that stuff in the news and you it's presented in a hyperbolic way. And that is I, true. Although, yeah, but like it always seems to have a different kind of bias. I don't know. I think, yeah, I think there's definitely when people talk about like woke stuff it's like there are it's not hard to find examples of people on the left who are overreacting to things that's true it just seems like the people who overreact on the right are tending to be violent like you were saying oh the right hasn't been violent and i was just hearing all these examples off the top of my no, head no, 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 no. and you were like I'm, they don't count? i'm talking about the know. maga the maga crowds themselves. i mean the maga yeah the maga like the people at the rallies i don't know they were just like 
punching people? I don't know if there was five. There was, was, there was some their punching. little party. There was some punching. There wasn't like each other, which is there, you know, okay. There wasn't like every major city had riots. We have to we have to own that. I I I yeah, one of the riots happened because myself, the police are awesome but, and we should always kiss their butts even if they like uh, murder I'm people not, and never there's never any consequences for that. No, like I, the, I, it I, seems I like at this point there are always consequences when someone on the left commits a crime, which you know should happen. Like people are like Al Franken, like yeah, he should have been kicked out. Joe Biden, the accusations against him, not sure if he should have uh, become president. But then, like, I mean, the guy was at Mo Brooks from Alabama who was like helped the insurrectionists. He was mad about how the subpoena was delivered to his wife. It's like, dude, you there have to be consequences for your actions. Like, you can say that the people in the Capitol, they just got out of hand. It's like, yeah, but breaking and entering's a crime. So, you know, they should probably have some kind of consequences. So yeah, there should be consequences. Um, are people overreacting? I, I, I don't know. I, I was hearing about people protesting in Atlanta and then the cops were just like tear gas. Like why are cops just tear gassing people that are protesting? Right. For the most right. part, not being, I mean, sure. There are people being violent and you can say it's bad. It was that um, there was a guy running for governor. who's like become the super right wing. And he was in an interview and he was like, well, Joe Biden hasn't said that Antifa and BLM are terrorists. And the person asking questions was like, well, he did say he was against the violence. And he's like, well, he has to say they're terrorists. And it's like, you have to say that these groups and then you make them into this other like Antifa is a, this is a very, very nebulous thing. There are actually right, people right. who are Antifa, but it's not like a group that you can like point fingers at. I don't know. Some would argue that tough, you and I it's are. It's a tough Antifa, time. Depending on how you define oh, it. Oh, Antifa, yeah. Know. I'm a, what is it, a, a lieutenant, a colonel, or right, a, right. A 57th, whatever infantry. But then, like, right. the people who attack anti racism and people who attack Antifa, does that just mean you're racist? Or does that mean you're. Because if you're supporting the status quo, which is what most people try to do, it's like the status quo is usually racist and usually maybe it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still pretty bad. And we're yeah. like saying that's what we want for a lot of people politically. And it's not great. My, my but yeah, only, you can't say your side is always, yeah. Always right. that is always my, right. And against you have to, you have to be able to accept criticism. And yeah, yeah I think and, you can be really quick to like talk over, which I've been doing for the last five minutes. And I apologize. <laughs> I'm supposed to let you talk. This is what happens. When no, I'm no, I'm, I, show. I'm I talk too you. much. I think I uh, uh, interrupted you a couple times, but, but uh, uh, my, my only point was that, that we have to own it. So I think whenever, whenever we do criticize the capital thing, we have to recognize that, that we just came through a whole year of our team fucking a lot of shit up. And I, I could care less if a JC Penney's burns. Good, fuck them, you know. And I, I totally get that. Yeah, well, the the systemic racism that's been going on, and the police corruption that's been going on, and and that it it disproportionately affects uh, people of color, absolutely. So there's shit's gonna get crazy, you know. I I, I support that, but we got on like like twenty five people died, <laughs> you know, like. Major cities were burning. Were, it, like it's, that's interesting. Like I need to look in because I, I, I that was a number I heard earlier today. Um, were those people killed by protesters? Were they killed by cops? Were they killed like how did they die? Like it's like a mixture. Because every unnecessary death is is a bad thing. Some of and them. It's like I want to. I'm, I'm. I know it's so easy to 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 other. And I think that's just happening a lot, but it's hard to to not <laughs> when you hear just such horrible things being like people are. I mean, that is a Trump thing. Like people are feeling more free to to say what they feel, and they're more like, "Oh, cool, we have to be. We can say we're racist. We can say that a certain community of people are are dumber, and you know, skull shapes, and all those fun arguments that seem to have come from the 19th century, and we haven't got rid of them yet. Woohoo! 
I mean, that's one of the things that came right. from like evolution was the, you know, Germany deciding to like kill all people of certain diseases. So congrats, you know, yeah. eugenicist type stuff. <laughs> For sure. Oh, I got a subscription. Yay. Yeah, I don't know. Native Atheist who's in the chat. I have not heard of you before, but thank you for being on and, uh, and chatting. So does, um, we're getting close to the end, does Right to Reason have an official YouTube channel? Do you just basically put your podcast on kind of like what I do? Um, yeah, it's it's just called the Right to Reason, uh, the channel name. And then uh, the the kind of hub that has everything, whether it's the RSS feed for the podcast or, or uh, YouTube or Patreon or ways to support or uh, blogs or what have you, is just the right to reason dot com. Okay, and um, yeah, before we get to the end, uh, is there anything else you wanted to cover? And uh, you know, what are some maybe upcoming uh, guests you're gonna have on your show? Yeah, we got a white supremacist. Uh, we've got um, a debate on critical race theory, where we're going to have. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, we'll finally figure that thing out. <laughs> we we well, I don't think it's here's here my take. I, I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's like the blue, black, or gold, black dress thing that was real popular. You know, like it's it's just a popular thing on the internet right now, and it's because of all these right wing talking heads, like like your best friend Crowder. But the uh, uh, but We're close, yeah. Go way back. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a big deal. I, I'm currently. I just. I just got my political science uh, uh, bachelor's. I'm working on my criminal justice master's. I can. I can tell you. Thus far, nobody's talking about it. Uh, you know, like it would. It would have come up. Well, by it's now. weird because it's getting. It's not an academic point in states, but it's not actually something that's. Right in the states yet, it's one of right. those like it's not, a, it's not Republican a real talking things. It's yeah. just that it's a it's a cheap win, basically. It's something. It's and, something to attack when they're not attacking, you know, the 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 overgrowth of well, Marxism, like trans Marxism. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow, Black Lives course, Matters was Marxist, and and trans mm -hmm. people are Marxist, and it's just a new thing, and they're all worked up. But anyway, I thought I'd do an episode on it since it's it's in the it's in the venue. Of, of discussion so we've got a phd on uh african-american studies coming on and then we've got javier javier uh from the javier javier show ben fama from the ben fama show um uh brent lee from unapologetics um uh oh i'm gonna leave somebody out oh and, oh and uh, jason hannerfeld is a, a really cool musician dude they're all just gonna argue with each other after that <laughs> so we'll still get the debate time in but i i told him like we can't do this unless we actually because we're all just a bunch of animals that are going to yell over each other we have to actually have a professional explain what it is for at least 10 minutes before we embarrass ourselves so um that's in the seems future. wrong to actually like explain what something is i don't seem like very podcasty youtube of you come on <laughs> you just want people to yell at each other just and, for 10 know, minutes and feel like you won and you know go to our corners it's beautiful yeah that's what it's all about. Well, thanks, uh, Robert, for being back on the show. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been too long. Uh, if I wanted to debate about something that I don't know much about, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll reach out. Absolutely. Hey, that would be great. You want to do one <laughs> in the future? Okay, I don't know. I, I believe I, you tried to reach out to me about, I don't know, <laughs> the whole Silverman thing happened. And I was just like, I don't want to debate about this. <laughs> something. I'll get you a flat earther. And Ooh. then we'll bring you on and, and let oh you beat them up. You gotta watch. The thing it. is, like, like, I would probably get run by a bluff fighter. They'd just crush me somehow. No, not with them. their flat hands. Yeah, they're they're actually stupid. But the ones you gotta watch out for are the the nine eleven truthers. Mm. Is because some of them are really stupid. Because you know, if you're a flat earther, you're definitely a nine eleven truther. But not all nine eleven mm. truthers are flat earthers. You know, some of them are like wow. kind of they know their shit, and you'll be like. Oh, what? So you're going to tell me uh, uh, jet fuel can't melt steel beams? And they'll just be like, bup, 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 into all this documentation of this guy. That, that, you know, I'm, actually, uh, I have an engineer with me right now. The guy was popping, hey, you know, and just, you got to watch out with some of those guys. They know their shit. Mm -hmm. so. Well, good. Yeah. Well, just uh, right to reason, people. 
you just you'll you'll get uh, you'll learn things you'll uh, laugh you'll cry and uh, you know you'll cry you for sure you might learn something <laughs> you'll cry for sure there you go it's always good talking okay. to you man I'm glad I'm glad we've stayed in touch and, and we should uh, we should talk more often sounds good thanks for being on the family name is my legacy to you I got it from my father and he got it from his father. And he traded a mule for it. And that mule went on to save spring break. Live read. CRT debate. I'll admit that I haven't watched this debate. And I'm going to ask you to watch it. Or listen to it. Or whatever you do with YouTube. You know, sometimes I get into the video aspect of YouTube. And sometimes I just treat it like a different podcast app. So I didn't watch the debate as much as nibble at the corners like a major league pitcher. Uh, I struggle with debates. I think I've already said that. I find that people are trying to win instead of actually having good points and trying to discuss the diverging sides. So yeah, CRT debate and involved my buddy Aaron Rabinowitz of uh, in ETV, something the void. It's the void. Embrace the void. So Check it out if you dare, and uh, you might learn something, and you might just want to throw your uh, phone out the window. So, be warned. Uh, if you want to support this show, be like Freethinker215, Alan Marks, You Man, Chris of the Podunk Polymath Podcast, Larry Daryl, and the other Daryl, and go to patreon.com backslash Zacrilege. Fun perks await, extended episodes, and uh, when I remember to post them, cat videos. Follow me on Twitter. Like the Zach Religious Cast page on Facebook and send no mail to zachrelich.cast at gmail.com. Always looking for guests. In fact, do not have a current uh, guest coming up, so we'll see how it goes. And until then, let's continue the conversation. Welcome to the Zach Cast.